6.30 p.m. And then Friday, the church office will be closed as well. Coming up next Sunday, we have confirmation youth group and uh, confirmation youth dinner and youth group starting at 4 o'clock. Youth group starts at 6 o'clock. Um, so we hope to see our youth for, for that as well. Um, in the narthex, we have a basket to collect used sneakers um, for the RV boys soccer team. They will uh, share those sneakers if they're in good enough condition with people who may need them. Otherwise, they'll be repurposed um, for playground and track surfaces. Um, and then additionally, next weekend, we begin our Christmas gift card sale. Um, and we'll be placing orders at three times this fall, uh, October 23rd, November 13th, and December 4th, just so that you can get those in time for whatever you may need. Uh, also on October 29th, we'll be doing our uh, Bibles and devotionals for many of our youth, four-year-olds, four first graders, third graders, confirmation students, and 12th graders. So if uh, you know any of them and if they would like to take part, um, we invite you to let the church office know so that we can include them on the 29th. I believe that concludes the announcements, and so now I invite you to please stand. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, the Spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. For the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading this morning is from the 18th chapter of Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating his proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Here now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live, they shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, otherwise iniquity will be your ruin, cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let's say Psalm 25 responsively. To you, O God, I lift up my soul. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long.
Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. Our second reading is from the second chapter of Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be the same mind having the same love, being in full accord, and of one mind, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. Being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Word of God. Word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the twenty first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, then we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not, but later changed his mind and went. The father went to the second son and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Please pray with me. God of reconciliation and redemption, you call your people to return to you with humble hearts. Grant that we would see your almighty power through mercy and your unending might in peace. 
draw near to us and bring to fruition the work that you are doing in each one of us. Guide and encourage Denise and Jackie as they conclude their music ministry with us. Bless and strengthen this congregation as we face transitions in our music ministry. In the name of Jesus, in whom your will is made complete, we pray. Amen. Most of us will be quite familiar with the plight of the Father in today's Gospel reading. We've all had someone tell us that they're going to do something and then completely fail to do it. Maybe we've heard it from people at work or family or friends. But even if not, the seemingly endless political season we find ourselves in means we can almost always point to politicians that are making all kinds of promises. And we know full well that most of these promises will be ignored after the next election. Because unfortunately, what people say and what people do don't always line up. Of course, that should be different with God, right? We should always be willing and able to do what God desires. It's what we're taught in Sunday school. It's why we have biblical heroes like Moses and Abraham. And yet, despite the feeling that we should be able to do God's will, there's an extremely common question in devotions and Bible studies asking, what is God's will for your life? And in many cases, that's a very difficult question to answer. The Lutheran prayer for good courage begins by admitting this very truth. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. We don't always know where God is leading us, or what exactly God wants for our lives. Certainly, it is hard to know sometimes. And yet, not, despite not knowing God's will, we feel like we need to follow it because we pray in the Lord's Prayer each week or even daily that God's will be done. But there are also times that we do know God's will for us, things that we know are right and good, but we don't want to do them because it's outside our comfort zone or we're afraid or we simply don't feel like it. We feel a pull on our conscience when we see injustice around us. The words of the prophets call us to return to God in faith and humility. We know that justice and peace are God's will for our world, and we feel called to do something about it. But we don't. And so in times like these, when we feel called to do God's will, but we fail to do it in both word and deed, perhaps we identify not with the father in this story, but with the two sons. When we're feeling like these two sons, though, this gospel passage also provides us a message of hope when we find ourselves struggling to respond to God's will. You see, in today's gospel story, Jesus encounters the chief priests and elders, and Jesus tells them a parable about a father who had two sons. The father needed them to go out and work in the vineyard. The first son refused to go, but later changed his mind and went. The second said that he would go, but never went to work in the vineyard. Jesus and the religious leaders agree that it is the first son, the one who did eventually go and work in the vineyard, that had done the will of his father. Now, we don't know anything else about these two sons. That's the nature of parables. We don't know anything of their work ethic. We don't know if this was a regular occurrence for the sons or if this was unusual behavior. We don't know what sort of interaction or conversations the sons may have had with one another or with their father after the initial response to their father's request. And we don't know what may have prevented or encouraged either of the sons to act differently from their stated intentions. What we do know is this. The son who said he'd go never showed up. And the son who at first refused went and worked. And we know that despite the first son's seemingly abrupt refusal of his father's command, he is the one who eventually did the father's will. So here's where I find hope. 
I find hope in seeing that that first son, who was so quick to refuse his father, eventually changed his mind and he got to work. There is hope that it's never too late to respond to the grace of God. There is hope that one's past actions or current status do not determine one's future. There is hope for those people that the chief priests and elders and churches and pastors and congregations love to exclude. There is hope for those people whom churches have given up on and have decided are outside the love of God. There is hope for all people who struggle with their faith and struggle to respond to God's will. Because today in our gospel reading, we see that they are never beyond, God's, beyond the reach of God. In today's gospel reading, we see that no matter what has happened in the past, God is always willing to welcome us and stir the spirit within us so that we can respond to God's call for our lives. God is always working in us, working on our hearts. And even after we have said no or turned away from God's call, God is still there. The truth is we're all equally in need of God's welcome, God's forgiveness, and God's love, because we've all fallen short of God's desire and God's will for our lives. So we hear the proclamation and promise from God in Ezekiel, turn then and live. And in these words, God invites us, God calls us to turn back toward God, to listen and discern God's will for our lives. And we have the promise that God grants us the gift of eternal life, regardless of how well we're able to live God's call. When we fall short, when we say we'll do something and fail, we can trust in God's promise that there is abundant love and forgiveness for each of us, and that God will keep calling us to serve no matter how many times we turned away. The chief priests and Pharisees were not left out of the kingdom. It was just that others got there first. God's promises are for all. And so we know that God loves us no matter how we respond to God's call. We know that God will never let go of us even when, like the sons in the gospel reading, we are unwilling or unable to hear how God wants to use us in this world. We know that God will always be present with us guiding us and encouraging us to step onto God's path for our lives and immerse our, ourselves in the journey that God has planned for us. But we also know that we're not alone as we seek to respond to God's call. God has called each one of us to serve and work in this world, and God has formed us together as this community so that we might support and encourage one another as we go about discerning God's will and responding to God's call. This is God's call for us, to work for justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly with our God. And it's never too late to live more fully into that call. It's never too late to live more generously. It's never too late to pray more fervently. It's never too late to serve more regularly. God is always present with us, seeking us out, encouraging us to respond to God's will. And God is always there for us even when we fall short, offering endless forgiveness and unconditional love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand.
Gathered now with all the people of God in Christ Jesus, we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. Please stand, sit, or kneel in preparation for prayer. We put our trust in you as we pray for the church. Give bishops, pastors, deacons, and teachers the gifts of wisdom and discernment. Be with them in bold truth and faithful witness, merciful God. Lead us in your truth as we pray for creation. Empower us to look to the interests of others as we make choices that impact the environment. Summon us to the advocates for healthy waterways, habitats, and air, merciful God. Lead us in justice as we pray for those in government the military, and other positions of authority. Give them humble and willing hearts, looking to the needs of others. We pray also for our enemies. Merciful God. Trusting your goodness, we pray for all caregivers and people who are sick or suffering in any way, especially Mary, Robert, Dennis, Roberta, Donna, Stephen, Brenda, Nancy, Marge, Walt, Linda, Pat, Connie, Vera, Michelle, Greg, Joan, Julia, Marie, Marilyn, and Gretchen. And those we now name either silently or aloud. Give them encouragement and consolation in your presence. Merciful God. Teach us your paths as we pray for the congregation. Be at work in us and unite us in your love as we labor together for the sake of the gospel. Merciful God. O oh God of majesty, saints and angels, delight to worship you, and by grace we join their unending hymn. Bless Denise and Jackie, our music directors, as they conclude their ministry with us. Sustain them with your guidance and love and grant us patience and hope in this time of transition. Let our worship always sound forth the joy of your presence and make music to the glory of your name, merciful God. We give thanks for all the saints who died secure in the knowledge of salvation especially Monica Dixon and Steve Schell. Keep us fearless in our faith and certain of your resurrection, merciful God. Receive our prayer. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our hearts, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of peace. Peace be with you.
fashion us with your love as we lift high the cross giving all to our God our souls fly to you heaven is in our midst Please stand. Let us pray. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we 
should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus invites you to this table. Come, eat, and live. You may be seated. Communion will be celebrated at the rail this morning for those preferring to remain in their pew for safety or mobility reasons or those worshiping on the live stream. I will lead you in communion following the distribution.
Now for those receiving communion in your pew or worshiping on the live stream. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand. Now the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This time I invite Denise to come join me up front and the congregation may be seated. Dear friends, united with all the baptized in one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, we are joined in God's mission for the life of the world. We are called to that mission in our daily lives and in the ministries we share as the Church of God. Today, it is our privilege to give thanks to Denise Porter, our Director of Music, as she concludes over 20 years of service in this congregation. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Holy Spirit equips the Church with a rich variety of gifts. We give thanks for the ways these gifts have been shown forth among us through Denise. We pray for your share, for, we praise you for shared joys and accomplishments, and we commend our work to you. Grant that we may continue to bear witness to Christ in lives that are built on faith and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, members of St. Paul's Lutheran Church, do you release Denise from service as your director of music? We do, and we give thanks to God for our ministry together. Denise, do you accept the completion of your ministry with St. Paul's Lutheran Church? I do, and I give thanks to God for our ministry together. And Denise, as you pre prepare to move out of state, we wish to bid you farewell. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said, I am going to send an angel ahead of you to guard you on your way and bring you to the place that I have prepared. And from John, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you a member of his church. When you came to this congregation, we rejoice to welcome you in the mission that we share as the people of God. You have enriched us with your musical gifts, your leadership in worship, and your energy for the church's ministries. God has blessed you in this community, and God has blessed us through you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the work and witness of your servant Denise, who has enriched this congregation and shared her gifts with this ministry, with this community. Surround us in your love. Accompany your people in times of joy and times of trial. 
prosper all that has been done to your glory in this time together. Heal and forgive all that has fallen short of your will for us. Help Denise and all of us to live with courage and gladness in the future you give to us. Now bless and preserve Denise at this time of transition. As she has been a blessing to us, now send her forth to be a blessing to others. Day by day, guide her and give her what is needed, friends to cheer her way, and a clear vision of that to which now you are calling her. By your Holy Spirit, be, ple be present in her pilgrimage, that she may travel with the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join me in the center of the aisle for a blessing. The congregation is invited to stand and gather in, put a hand on Denise's shoulder, and share a blessing with her. She'll go a little further down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we'll gather in for the blessing. You can lay a hand on her shoulder or on somebody on the way. Still crowding in? All right. All right. The Lord bless you and keep you, Denise. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Now for the congregation, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. 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 All right. We'll let Denise go back up to the organ. <laughs> Thank you. Work, yeah. Thank you.
Go in peace. God is at work in you.